Okay, I don't think there's anything I can say about that that would not take us down, but <laughs> it's, it's down new part here. But um, I wanted really to, uh, to appreciate everybody who came here today. Uh, Erica, where's Erica? Erica, I, I came to see her this morning, and unfortunately I didn't feel very well uh, today. I couldn't participate in the uh, Armstrong uh, Big School uh, uh, career day. Uh, but uh, I came home and I remembered that there was another day in my life where there was a party and I was sick for that party. And I was really sick that, that day and it, was, it ended up being uh, the best day of my life and that was the day that I met my wife. Uh, that, not that met, I'm sorry, that was our uh, wedding day. <laughs> I was promising that day too. But no, that, that, was, uh, that was our uh, first, uh, that, that was our wedding day. And uh, by the way, the interesting point is, uh, Throughout this campaign, between now and April 2nd, we're going to celebrate our 20th anniversary. We have uh, two other uh, princesses, two babies sitting in the back. Uh, that's Maya and Shira. They both go to uh, Robinson Middle School. Uh, they went to uh, High Tower before that. Uh, I want to tell you a bit about us, and I want to tell you about uh, my, my vision. Uh, we moved to the U.S. in 98 and uh, became citizens uh, in uh, 2009. Uh, we came to the U.S. not with a uh, relocation package. We came with a six months pregnant wife, uh, with Maya, in 10 suitcases. That's when they didn't charge $25 for school. <laughs> um, in 2002, I joined TI in the Silicon Valley. And uh, not to ask me if uh, joining TI, does that mean that we're going to have to move to Dallas uh, from Silicon Valley? And I said, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and she said, what if they offer you, uh, they wanted you to move and become a general manager, and uh, sure enough, a year and a half later, there's something she knew that I didn't that they didn't make an offer like that, and you move here. And we had to find a place to live in. And there are all kinds of opportunities uh, from Dallas, North Dallas, and anywhere around uh, where Texas Instruments is. But we chose Plano, and we chose Plano because of the schools. That was number one. Plano had the best schools in this area, and that's why we moved here. And uh, I'm asked sometimes why am I running now? Because you know, after nine years of the two girls being in school, because they started in uh, preschool, after nine years of them being in schools in Plano ISD, maybe it's time, it's time to give back. I'm not a typical candidate. I wasn't born in Texas, I was born in Plano. I didn't go to Plano schools, I went to uh, schools in Israel. And um, maybe that's, that's what I bring. I bring a different perspective. I come from Israel, I come from Silicon Valley, I come from industry. And uh, you know, one of the questions that I'm asked many times is, uh, who are you running against? And some of you already know that the first uh, answer that I give, I take the high road and I say, I, I'm not running against, I'm running for. But you know what, I, I thought, Hard and I am running against. I'm running against complacency, I'm running against entitlement, and I'm running against the mediocrity. And uh, you know, as far as complacency, I remember, and Doug, oh, that's, that, that's a statement, uh, when I went to my MBH studies, uh, there was a, uh, uh, a vice president of Norway's bank who made a statement, a very smart statement, he said, we're number one and we still have time to fix it. So that's why I feel here. We're very strong, but we can still make it better. There's always better. Um, when I talk about entitlement, we, we have this mentality. That, that's what I noticed when, when I was teaching in UT Dallas. I noticed that uh, I was teaching in the MBA and MSIE class, and my class had so many prerequisites that you could only take that in your last semester. And what I noticed was that students in their master's degree, the last semester of their degree, are not ready. They're not ready for life, they're not ready for business, and somehow they think that there's a job waiting for them at the end. And I want them to take control of their life. I want them to be empowered, to control, control their own future. One of the things I believe in is that all children are different. And you know, I, I got a sense uh, coming with uh, quite a few of you uh, from Austin, and we spent the last two days in Austin, and uh, we met uh, quite a few of our legislators and others, and uh, I, I met great people, some of them are, are here. And uh, what I noticed is Texas is pushing us to teach to the middle. We're teaching to the middle. We're not trying to get and find what's great at every child. 
and make those better. And that's, that's at least what uh, I'd like to do. Uh, vision. What is my vision for, uh, for, this, uh, for this district? And if I get elected, that would be what I'm, I'm fighting for. You know, when, when you talk about vision, and I, as my role as a strategist in many organizations, including the Texas Israel Chamber of Commerce, the uh, Alliance for Higher Education, and others, and even in, in the companies that I serve with, vision statement sometimes is something that doesn't have a lot of meaning. You use some very specific words, and sometimes it requires a manual just so that people read the vision statement would understand it. So I want to share with you my vision. There's a great book called Startup Nation that explains the, uh, the miracle of Israel and why Israel is so, uh, or so many companies in Israel are creating and innovating. And um, there is a military unit called 8153. And since uh, that uh, book mentioned it, then I will as well. 8153. And if you and a few friends will start a company in Israel and you're going to seek funds from a VC, the VC would look at your resume, would ignore everything, would ignore what college you went to, what university, what degree you have, and all of a sudden they're going to see this A153 and they know that this is going to be a successful company. I want the same with the word Plano, or Plano ISD. I want 10 years from now, when kids coming through the PISD system, to try and start a company, and at that point, I want the VCs who are about to invest in that company to say, oh, these kids are from Plano, and know that they're going to be successful. There's a second part for that, and that is uh, another thing that I want is uh, 10 years from now, I want the admission officer in Stanford to be sitting with parents of a child from San Francisco and tell that those parents, you know what, this year, we have about 10 kids from Plano, so things are not looking so good. <laughs> uh, we need metrics. You know what? We need metrics. I, we do have metrics. We have accountability. We have a lot of things that the state imposes on, on us, but I don't think that we're measuring the right things. And I think that we need to rework those, whether we're here or we're in Austin. And, uh, you know, I met with the team in uh, 2715th Street, the administration building for PISD. I met them, and uh, well, that would be better to see if it was my phone. <laughs> but, uh, I met uh, I met with them, and this is a great group of people. God, who just left, uh, he was there in the uh, in that building for 17 years, I believe. He has quite a few people there who has spent 17 or 20 years running that school district, and after 17 years, they're passionate. They're a great group of people, and I told them after meeting each one of them there, I told them, you know what? It's because of you that I really want to win. I want to win this because I want to work with them. And one of the questions that they asked me was, uh, what do you think the role is of a board member? And I don't know what happened, and I don't know what happened in the last several years, but one of the things they asked me was, uh, how deeply involved would you get with what we do every day? So I gave them an answer. I want to tell you what I, I see the role of the board member. The role of the board member is to hire the right people, fire the right people, give them a vision, inspire them, and get the hell out of their way. And when you get out of their way, you're down in Austin or you're in Washington, D.C., and you have their back. That's the role of the board member. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for being here today. I want to thank your support. Uh, we want to win this. So uh, your support does not end in being here. We need you to do things, and I'm sure that uh, Mark would uh, say more. Um, but when I meet you, all those people, you know, I, I was told that uh, running a campaign is going to be really, really hard. And it's going to drain a lot of your energy. But you know what? Meeting every one of you whenever we met, and meeting all the other people who are supportive and uh, are not here, you give me energy. This is why I'm running. I wanted to thank Anat, my wife, and I know that the first time that I met with John in the back there, uh, who said John served 15 years on this board, and I know that uh, when John, uh, I was consulting with him and he said, uh, so what's stopping you? I said, you know what, there's one person there that I need to know that she's behind me. 
And I think that it wasn't until uh, maybe it was the uh, Rotary Club Casino Night when she, she went with me and uh, so many people shook my hand and said, you need to win this, you need to be on the board that you realize that uh, I'm not just doing it for myself. Again, I want to thank everybody for your support, for everything that you're doing, and let's win this thing. Mm -hmm.